Hello. In this video, we're going to look at the process of outputting the results of a MySQL query in a table using PHP. This is the third video in a series, so at this point, I need you to already know about requires, or, so requiring a connect script. Just a good old-fashioned connect script without a require would be fine here. This is what a simple query looks like of a database. And in the previous video, I showed you a little bit about what we're supposed to do with this thing. So the result of our query is this variable called result. And so we want to talk about a, a way to, to output an actually a well formatted uh, output for this. So let me refresh what the table looks like. So the table that I'm printing out is this right here. So I've got an ID, I've got a name, I've got a category, I've got calories. I need to make some decisions about what I actually want to display. I'm going to display the name category and the calories. I'm not going to display the ID. So let's get to that. So in my previous video, I showed you a process for looping through the results. So I'm going to show you that real quick. So if I create a while loop, and if you're not sure how this works or why it works, you should watch the previous video, which is interpreting uh, results. So I'll say row is equal to my SQLI uh, fetch underscore ASOC and that function expects to be passed a result. I need to close that parenthesis, open a curly brace, close that curly brace, and so that's the recipe for iterating through my results. Like I said, I discussed that in the previous video, so now we're to the well-formatted part of this. So if you want to spit this out in a table, so the, the process generally works like this. So each trip through this while loop is going to spit out a row. Uh, the table itself needs to be displayed um, before, like the opening and closing table tags need to happen before and after the table. So I'll say table, and I'm going to say border equals one. Just that's not a great way to style your table, but I'm going to do it. So I have an opening table tag before the loop, and then down after the loop, I'm going to echo out a closing table tag. Yeah, I know this this is sloppy with all the echoes all over the place, but I'm just it's probably the easiest way to illustrate it. So like I said, this part of code right here is going to be responsible for outputting the individual rows. There's only one set of opening and closing table tags. Notice those are outside of the repetition. Now, to make this thing more readable, I think it makes a whole lot of sense to spit out like a, uh, uh, a header row, if you will. So opening and closing TR tags. And now, like I said, we we're going to display the name, the uh, category and the calories for each one. So each one of those is going to require a TD of its own. So TD, opening and closing. Just to keep, make things straight, I'll just write my little label there so it's going to say name. Um, the next set of TDs, notice I open and close them. That's just style, but I, it's easy to forget to close them if you don't open and close them immediately. The next thing was a category. And then the last set of TDs is calories. So that's kind of my recipe. So this is just my heading row. It's going to get printed one time. And then the, let me uh, let me just save this and we'll have a look at it because at this point I just wrote kind of a lot of opening and closing tags so I don't have absolute faith that this is just going to work. So if I refresh I get that. That looks good, right? So my table opens and closes. I've got these, uh, my heading row seems to have done what it did. Now the last part to do is spit out the contents of the table itself. Now one of the benefits of writing your heading header row first is a trick I like to do. I like to copy and paste that because because the internal rows of the table are going to have the same number of TDs and TRs. So I'm going to copy that. Actually, so the whole, whole line. So I'm going to copy that and I'm just going to paste it right here. Now I don't just want to, want to spit out the word name, category, calories. I want to spit out the actual relevant fields to the actual results. So let me remind you again of what the table looks like. So the, the, right here's the names of the fields, name, category, calories. So if I want to pull those out, what I need to do is uh, I don't just want name, I want the row, opening square bracket, back tick, name of the field, closing back tick, closing square bracket. That's kind of what I want to do. Right, I don't just want to spit out the word name. I want the name field from that given row. Now, one of the things I've mentioned before in other videos is you're not allowed to do that. You're not allowed to echo out a uh, uh, an array like that. But what you can do is wrap it in curly braces like that. 
and let me show you how this whole thing works out. So that's that's key. You can either do some kind of nasty concatenation or you can wrap it in curly braces. I'm a fan of curly braces because it's a lot easier. Let me refresh this and show you what we got. So notice I'm getting actually the real names from the rows and I'm just spitting out placeholders for the other things, which I think is fine, right? Placeholders are a great idea when you're doing something kind of complicated in structure like a table. So then I just kind of go through the process of, hey, I don't want that to be category. Instead, what I want it to be is a row, square bracket, backtick, category. Closing backtick, closing square bracket. And remember, this thing needs to be wrapped in a curly brace and then I guess I'll save it and show you. I don't want to, but I will just because you might. it might help you to understand what's happening. So now, category. Oh, I screwed something up pretty good. So it's real easy to make mistakes here. So I'm, oh, I forgot to put a dollar sign on the row. So I don't know what I was referencing, some whatever. Um, let me save that. Always debatable. Do I leave the bugs in the video or do I not? I know when I'm watching people's videos and they make mistakes, I kind of appreciate seeing them because it helps you to realize that uh, everyone makes mistakes. So that wasn't exactly my mistake. Oh, I, that was a good one. So this TD, somehow I, somehow I killed the beginning of that TD tag. All right, and I just said leaving in mistakes is a good idea probably, but probably not to that extent. And now you can see I'm getting some actual data here. It happens. I mean, this is a pretty horrendous string of code right here. The good news is, you don't have to do this particularly often. And the even better news is you'll get better at it. So the last part here is I want to replace that just static word calories with a dollar sign, row, opening square bracket, opening square bracket, back tick, closing back tick, closing square bracket. And then I'm going to wrap this thing in curly braces. And that's the recipe for spitting out a dynamic table. So now I refresh one last time. And now I'm displaying the results of my table in a pretty readable form. I mean, yeah, sure, this table looks horrible, but that's where CSS comes into play. It might be useful to set the widths of my columns, maybe, you know, uh, shade alternating rows. But that right there is a valid table. Let me show you the last little bonus tip I'm going to show you. And that is, so when you're outputting a table, and if you have, really have problems, uh, not syntactical problems, but just the way it looks, you can view the page source. And you see, I get this just horrendous, just giant string of code. You know, not, not a lot of fun to debug. But what you can do to help yourself out here is when you know you're going to be using repetition to generate, generate like a thousand character string, you can uh, put these new line characters. So just forward slash new line at the end of every row. I think that makes a lot of sense. This doesn't have any impact on what the user sees, but it will create a much more, and you'll see like no difference here, but if I view the page source, now my table actually looks kind of like what you would expect a table to look like. Oh, that's a lot of fun. And at this point, you notice that I just kind of got away with murder. That should, be, that should be a closing TR, which I didn't do. And at this point, it's probably as good as any to point out that there's a, some crazy things that you can get away with, right? So notice I was missing those. I bet some of you noticed that I was missing those almost immediately. Notice uh, not much of an impact on the table, but my source code is now non-junk, right? And I probably wouldn't have caught that if I didn't put line breaks in there. So that is just one recipe for outputting the results of a SQL query in an HTML table. It's a process that's done all over the web. I mean, you could put things in divs or display them however you wanted, but uh, a table is a pretty reasonable way to output the results of a uh, query. So hopefully this helps you to understand that process. And like I said, I left some debugging in there. If you liked it or didn't like it, you might want to say something about it in the comments because I'm always debating, should I reshoot that part or should I just leave in the 30 seconds of, of troubleshooting? And this time I decided to leave it in. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think about that and I hope this helped your understanding. Thank you for watching.